hello youtube welcome back to my channel so in today's video we're going to go take a deep dive in learning what prisma is and how you can use prisma uh, prisma library in working with your javascript application when it comes to interacting databases so ever ever had a react application and you want to interact a database and you don't feel like building an api to do that for you well uh good news we have prisma there so prisma can help you to interact with databases right from the front end application and can also help you to build api applications uh, to interact to help you to interact with databases when building api applications i uh, back in the services uh, so you can use prisma for that so if you can use prisma to build an api and the prisma the job of prisma is just to interact with database or you can use prisma in your right in your front end application uh, whereby you may be performing a simple crowd functionality such as retrie retrieving data updating data creating data just in the front end you can just use prisma clients for that so that's what we're going to be going over we're going to learn what prisma is and if you want to interact with databases in uh in javascript then you're probably going to think of prisma so in java in other languages you have things like JD jdbc for java java we have um uh, a java uh, django orm in java uh, python and other stuff like that so uh, this is the it's equivalent in javascript you're going to go over all of it so if you're in uh, like wanting to learn how to interact with databases then this course is for you so we're going to be going over this from an absolute beginner's point of view so this is going to be a crash course we're going to cover everything all the basic foundations you need to know to begin to use prisma okay so let's look at the course outline what you're going to be covering in this course so the first thing we're going to be looking at is what is prisma we're going to look at what prisma is uh, get a bit of theory about prisma and then finally you're going to learn you're going to go ahead and learn how to uh, set up prisma uh, from your node.js application you're going to go ahead and learn how to create databases and database schemas in uh, prisma and then you're going to learn how to perform crowd functionality such as adding uh, adding records to a database uh, retrieving record updating records deleting records uh, and stuff like that okay and then uh, finally we're going to go on to looking at relationships look at one-to-one -one relationships look at one-to-many relationships and then we'll look at um many-to-many um, uh, -many relationships and then finally that will be the conclusion we'll learn how to perform different uh filtering and advanced filtering and stuff like that that i didn't include include included in the course outline okay so uh let's get uh, started so the first thing i want to know is what is prisma so prisma is an orm an orm stands for an object relational mapper if you know what an orm is don't worry we'll cover the orm in the next slide so it mainly consists of three main parts there's a prisma client which is auto generated and type safe query builder for node.js and typescript so it's, it's type safe being that it's built on top of uh react uh, sorry the uh, typescript so it uh, gives you the type safe functionality uh you also have the prisma migrate which is uh, migrating we used to migrate your databases and stuff like that we also have the prisma studio which is just a graphical user interface that you can use right in your browser to view and edit data inside of your database okay so uh, what is an orm basically so an orm stands for an object relational mapper So basically what an ORM helps you do is helps you to separate the object oriented design of your application from your database design. So it's a layer that helps to converting data between the uh, object oriented design and the, and the database design. So we have your database, you have, you have your object oriented application and then you have the ORM and then which talks to the database. So if you want to uh, request data from, from your uh, object oriented programming application, the object oriented application talks to the ORM and the ORM talks to the database and gets the data, uh, communicates the database, get the data convert the data into an object oriented uh, uh, design that you can use inside of your object oriented application so that's basically what an orm is basically an object relational mapper helps to map the data uh, information between the object oriented design of your application and your database design okay if you know what an object oriented uh, approach is well uh, it's not really compulsory that you have to know but just like uh, knowing the base of object oriented uh, the application or programming is really good okay just to have an idea of one, uh, what an orm is basically but it's not an absolute necessity okay so database uh, supported by prisma so prisma supports uh, in different databases so if, whenever you have a postgres database that you want to interact with in your javascript application or api or front-end application you can use uh, uh, we can use uh, prisma you can use uh, prisma and prisma supports the full libraries okay? it supports postgres mysql databases sql databases which we'll be covering in this tutorial supports mongodb to the mongodb databases it also supports the cockroach db uh okay i hope it's pronounced like that cockroach db is a bit <laughs> a bit weird but yeah i never used it before but it also supports the cockroach db database okay so let's just look at prisma at a fundamental level so let's say that you have a front-end application that does basic uh, crowd functionality such as uh, reading records updating record creating records and deleting records so you don't have, you don't you, you don't need to build an api just to interact with database you can just use prisma right in your front-end application so prisma can act like a uh, 
a rest api basically so it talks to your it talks to your database gets the information and then you can send the information over to your front end application and then you can use it for whatever purpose you want so you have your client and the client talks to the database yeah you have your, your front end application it talks to prisma and prisma talks to the database so uh basically it acts like a rest api you can also use it to build rest apis if you want and yeah that's just because that's basically just uh prisma and i got this uh, uh image from the official documentation of prisma uh, in case you guys want to check it out okay okay so why should you use prisma above all other orms that javascript provides so uh one thing is that uh, orms are, are actually very good in, in terms of productivity even though, though they don't give you the absolute control or functionality like that they're playing sql or query build sql query builders um orms are actually very productive because if you just have an application that you want to do like the, the main main basic stuff right that you do in your everyday applications right so not any niche stuff like you want to do any just a simple uh, database operations filtering advanced filtering querying databases and stuff like that then you probably go for an orm because it's more productive with less code you can get more done but than using an sql plain sql code or using an sql builder that takes longer time to do even though they give you more control over your application okay so when you think of building something that does not require uh, excess control or manipulation of data, then you're probably be using an ORM for that because it, it, it extremely speeds up your productivity. Okay. So uh, now that you know what Prisma is, why you should use Prisma, what Prisma contains and all of that, uh, let's look a look at how you can install Prisma for Node.js application. So to do that, I have a browser open up here. So if you go to Prisma.io, which is the official documentation of Prisma, uh, you can get the information about how to install uh, Prisma and get started with Prisma. So this is official documentation and right now I went to the quick guide section and it looks like this, right? So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe in the future it won't look like this, but for now it looks like this. So it gives you instructions on how to set up uh, set up Prisma for your application. So let's go ahead and follow all these steps and then get, a, get Prisma started. So the first thing you have to do is just create a project directory and then simply do uh npn in it so let me just go in here so i'm in here instead of my uh my folder my on my terminal or you can use power powershell for windows users or you can use the terminal for mac users i'm on ubuntu so i'm going to use the terminal okay so i'm just going to say mkdo and i'm going to simply create a file folder called let me just say um prisma uh tutorial okay so prisma tutorial um just make it like prisma tutorial and i'm going to change directory into my prisma tutorial so once i'm in there i have no folder inside of this if i do an ls you can see there's no folder in in there okay so all the commands that i use uh, is going to work for windows as well so mkda just say create directory and then space and then the name of the directory that you want so just give it the name of the, the name of the directory that you want to create and then finally we go, i went ahead and say change directory we, uh, we're going to change that directory into the, the, the directory that you the directory that you have just created okay so that's basically it so previously we are in a directory a folder called tutorials and now we, we have changed directory into our prisma tutorials folder great so now that i'm in there i'm going to do an ls and you can see there's no content inside of it so if you're on windows that uh, is uh, ls the equivalent of ls is just dir on windows okay if you're on macbook it's also ls okay great so now that we have done uh, let done let me just go back to uh the official documentation so we have made a directory and have changed uh, uh access into that directory now you're going to do npm init to just create an npm project so i'm just going to go in here and then say npm init and i'm going to say that if and why just to agree to all that so once done it's going to create this is going to create for us if you do an ls it's going to create for the package.json file so once the package.json file is created uh, let's go back and see what the next step is so next step you're going to go ahead and install all of this okay so i'm just going to go ahead and simply copy this right here and then go back into my terminal and then paste this to install all the lesser libraries that we need so i'm just going to go in here and then simply do a uh, paste here so i'm going to press ctrl shift and v to paste or whatever whatever method you use to paste okay and i'm going to go ahead and simply run this so it's going to take some time and it's going to go ahead and install typescript node uh, typescript node js and then all of that okay because prisma is a uh, typescript and it's type safe right so once we have that done i'm just going to go ahead and create a file you're going to create a file you're going to call this file called the test uh, ts config.js i'm just going to go ahead and simply copy this and instead of uh, this file that you're going to create so the touch command is used to create a file i think even on windows is, is, uh, is the touch command okay so once we create this file right here you're going to go ahead and paste all this content inside of that file so let's go ahead and do that so let's just okay this is uninstalling so i'm going to go ahead and paste this command and run it so this is going to create for me now another folder another file called type.js right here so once i have this done i'm going to go ahead and simply open up my vs code so feel free to use any editor that you're comfortable using i'm just going to go ahead and use vs code 
so once i have vs code open up i'm just gonna close this and then open up uh tsconfig.js okay dot json right the json file uh json file yeah so once i have this i'm going to go ahead and paste all this inside of it according to official documentation i'm going to co copy all of this and then paste it in here so paste it in here and then hit save on that and i'm going to go back and then see what we need to do so now we need to go ahead and install prisma so i'm going to copy this command and then go back into my database so let me just go ahead and uh, put this one right here and this one so they have full screens right here okay great so i'm just going to go ahead and simply paste that right there and then we're going to install the uh, prisma okay so this should take some time and it should have prisma installed so once we have prisma installed uh, this is the command to create a simple uh, application they are basically going to be interacting with the uh, a SQLite database because I don't want us to use anything like Postgres or MongoDB, which can take a lot of time to set up. I had this course just to focus on Prisma solely. So, uh, uh, most of the things that are going to learn for SQL will translate to Postgres, and when it's not going to translate, I'll let you know. Okay, okay, so this is going to be an SQL SQL SQLite database. Sorry, <laughs> we're going to be using an SQLite light database for this. So, I'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this. And then go back in here and then paste it right here and then run that. So that's going to go ahead and install create for us an SQLite project right there. So once we have that done, uh, great, we are good to go. So you can see the very uh, full uh, commands right here. So that we can also go ahead and set up a database URL in the .env file. So let's go and see where we have a .env file. This is an environment variable file. And you can see it's going to create a database URL. It's going to create a database in dev.db so it's going to be a SQL light database called dev.db so if you're using other databases like um, postgres or other things you have to provide a url for that database right here okay okay so uh, one thing also gives us because uh you can uh, you can write prisma db pool to run your database schema into a prisma schema okay but we've not done that yet so also can also write uh prisma generates to generate the prisma client that you can use to start uh, querying our database and interacting with our database for now we're not going to go over that so let's go back to our slides and see what's next okay so uh, we have done that already so uh, we're going to look at relationships in databases okay so the first thing we're going to be looking at is uh we're going to looking at one-to-one -one relationships so because uh, we're going to be looking at these relationships while creating our database basically so uh, at most one record can be connected to uh, both sides of the relation that's basically what a one-to-one -one relationship is all about so let's say that a user can have a profile right and one user can have only one profile and one profile can belong to only one user that's an example of one-to-one -one relationship Okay, so I have a, a simple schema design right here that you're going to use to create our database schema to migrate our database. Sorry, to create a, uh, sorry, two tables, user table and the profile table. So we're going to have this, uh, this is schema that you're going to be using. So we're going to have a user is going to have an ID, a name, an email, uh, a post, right, which, is, which we should look at later on. So a user, a user is basically going to have an ID, a name, an email, and then also uh, one thing I didn't include here is the age of that user, okay? So let's go ahead and actually do that and let's see how we can do that in uh, in Prisma. So if you go under a, fo a folder here called Prisma, so if you go open up that folder and uh, inside of that folder, you'll find um, another folder called uh, schema.prisma, uh, schema.prisma, yeah, basically. So if you open up uh, uh, sorry uh, schema.prisma, uh, this is what you get in there. So it's using the database you're all from our environment variable, which is just the... Uh, in file database uh, SQL file database, database that you're going to be using right so let me just open up script uh, this right here so this is basically it and you're going to, going to be using the prisma client uh, to get all started as well so uh, before we get started let me just go ahead and uh, tell, uh, install a couple of extensions to help you with this so just go and search for prisma or uh, on um on vs code so if you search for prisma just go ahead and install this package right here i already have it installed already so make sure that you have prisma installed that's going to help you with your uh with the formatting of your code and other stuff like that okay so just make sure that you have prisma installed which is going to help you to interact your database and sorry to format your code and all of that stuff okay so yeah i have prisma already uh prisma extension already installed so that's going to help me with my uh with my formatting and stuff like that okay Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and create the user model. And to do the use to, 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 to create a table in our database, you can create a, uh, a schema right here. And uh, Prisma is going to use that schema to create an actual table in front of our SQLite database. And I'll just show you the SQLite uh, code just in a short while. So let's go ahead and make a model. So let me say model. Uh, let me say model. And I'm going to call this model user. So a capital U. So once I have the user here, this is going to have an ID. And the ID is going to be of type string. Okay, that is going to be of type string. You're going to give it an attribute. You're going to say this is it going to be the ID of this table. So to say that this is an ID, you just you have to use an attribute. You have to say uh, at and then ID. Okay, and then I have to say uh, percentage. You have to say default right there. Default right there. 
and then you have to say default and say uuid and then just like that so this is going to go ahead and create for you uh the default values for this so we're going to have a field called iid and it's going to be of the it's going to have an ID, attribute of id and it's going to be of default uuid so uuid is a more, much more safer id to use compared to just using integers but you, you can also use integers if you want you can just say uh int right here and once you say int you have to go ahead and say auto increment so auto increment right here just like that and that's going to create for you an id uh, int, uh id uh sorry an integer id or you can also go ahead and say uh sorry uh, let me just uh, undo that. So I'm just going to go here. You can also go ahead and say that I think it's called C U I D. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, C U I D. This is going to be of type uh, string, right? So string right here. Yeah. So you can also use C U I D for creating the ID. But in this case, I'm just going to keep things simple. And I'm going to go ahead and use the U U I D. Okay. Because I'm going to say U U I D. And that's what a lot of guys uh, use instead of the, uh, the databases for the ID. Because it's more secure than just using an integer, right? That people can change and manipulate okay so once we have the id there uh what else do we need so we also need to have the username the email and then the age of the user so we have to have go ahead and specify that there so we say the username and the username is going to be of type string and we want each username to be unique so we say unique right here and then you're going to go ahead and provide the email of the user and the email is going to be of type string and also we want the email to be unique right two users cannot have the same email and then finally we also want the age and the end is going to be of type string and I'm going to give it a default value. So I'm going to say default uh, age. You're going to say it, it, H is default is zero. That's a bad design, but uh, yeah, we can just let's leave it to be zero just to test it out. If you want, you can just remove it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it there. Just say default age is zero. I know that's probably not a good design, but yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it. And if I save it, you can see my code get properly formatted because of the Prisma extension that you uh, have installed. Okay. So make sure that you have this prisma extension uh installed okay so if you install it it's gonna format your code and the code is gonna look uh, much prettier so great so now you have the user and then we also have the the user information right here. the user id the name of the user the email and then the age of that user so great so once we have that also i also want to go ahead and learn uh, and, and go ahead and create the profile uh table so each user can have one profile and one profile can belong to each uh, only one user right that's a one-to-one -one relationship right so let's go ahead and create the, the the profile table as well so the profile table to create it i'm just going to go down here and you're just going to go ahead and say the same we will say model and the link model is going to be called profile and you're going to have the following code inside of it so we're going to have an id and it's going to be of type string and you're just going to say it's going to be uh, id and you're going to pass in the default and the default is going to be uuid yeah just like that okay great so once we have that you're going to say profile uh pick and then profile pick is going to be of type string just like that and then you're going to have location the location is going to be of type string and then you also have going to have the join the join date and the join date is going to be of type date time okay so it's got, these are just some data types that we have so the date the join date is uh, where the user joined uh, let's say like you're creating a uh, social media platform or where the user joined is going to be the join date and then you're going to have uh yeah that's basically what we need to do so i'm just going to go ahead and save this and it properly gets formatted so great so now you can see that we have these two uh, models right here we have the user model and we have the profile model but these two models aren't connected right because each user needs to have a profile and each profile can only belong to one specific user that's a one-to-one -one relationship so how do we implement that in um, prisma well to implement this in prisma uh, we must go ahead and use the we must go ahead and use uh just say let's let me just go ahead and show how to how to do it the first thing we need to go ahead and do is just say profile of the user and it's going to be of type profile just like that and then you're going to say profile and it's going to be uh optional right a user can have a profile or a user cannot have a profile so to say that this is optional field we just have to use a question mark to indicate that it's pro, uh, it is optional now don't worry about this error we're getting this error because uh we didn't actually create the relationship as well down here so to do it down here we're going to say uh user and the user is going to be of type the user right the user model that we created and it's going to have uh, we're going to keep an attribute of relationship right you're going to go give this relationship uh, we're going to say the fields of this relationship the field is going to be the user uh, id which you're going to create this in a second and then you're going to say uh, references and you're going to pass in the references id so what this is going to do is that it's going to reference the user id instead of the the user model so it's going to reference the user id instead of the user model and this field that you're going to uh, the field that is going to reference that is going to be a field called user id so let's go down here and create that field so we're going to say user id and it's going to be of type string and it's going to be a uh, unique right so unique 
and this needs to be unique because this is going to be a one-to-one -one relationship each you each user can have only one and one unique profile and each profile can be linked to only one and one unique user that's a one-to-one -one relationship so that's why you need to have this to be unique right so that's basically it so we need to also say that this is a string because uh it's going to reference the the user id the user id is also of type string so also this needs to be of type string so now I can, you can see that the error now is gone so if i go ahead and save this now you can see our code gets properly formatted and it looks cleaner and neater so that's basically it and how you can create uh, a relationship uh, for our table so that's basically it and for a unique table, one thing uh, for a one to one relationship, you are one thing you have to know that the ID needs to be unique because it's only mapping to one and one unique user only. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically it. So once we have this done, uh, we can just go ahead and migrate our database to create actually the table. So let's go back the slide and let's see. So to run, to run our migrate, to migrate our database, you have to say npx prisma, prisma uh, migrate and then dev and then finally, uh, hyphen hyphen name, you specify the name of the migration, right? Each migration can have a name. So if you look here right now in our prisma uh, folder, we have only the this prisma schema, right? So uh, let me just go back into our, uh, 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 our terminal and uh, right in our terminal, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is simply say uh, prisma. And let me just first write prisma uh, generate so prisma generate is going to go ahead and generate for us um uh, it's going to be npn uh, prisma uh, generate just like that and run this so this is going to go uh i think i made a mistake here so let me just uh prisma generate is not generating the prisma files let me just go ahead and check this i think i forgot the command from the official documentation um i think i just uh, missed that command so prisma generate should generate for us the prisma client that we can use thing is not uh, specified right here uh, okay let me just see so it's not specified right here so what i'm going to go ahead and do let's just follow what i have already prepared so let's say prisma uh, migrate and then pass in the name so it's going to say uh npx uh let me just say npx prisma i think it's npx prisma uh prisma generate okay Let's try this out so this is going to generate for us the prisma okay okay yes come on we have to use npx and not npn so let's give this a bit of time it's going to install a couple of things and it's going to generate for us the prisma clients that you can use okay so let's just give this a bit of time uh, to run that yeah so once you can see that's done we have the prisma client generated right here so you can simply copy this one right here so i'm just going to go ahead and copy uh, copy this one and this one you can just go back in, into our, our, our vs code and then simply place it uh where we can use it so we're going to go ahead and create a file called uh script.tx uh, so i'm just going into my database sorry into my application right here and down here in the root application i'm just going to create another folder i'm going to call it uh prisma uh sorry sorry scripts uh scripts js uh yeah script js and then simply go ahead and simply paste that client inside there so great so let's paste that in there for now and one thing also now we have, we have done that now we're going to go ahead and run our migration and the reason why we're running our migration is so we can go ahead and create uh the, the tables that of that that this schema defines so let's go ahead and actually do that so to do that you have to say npx and that command npx uh is right here so npx prisma generate and then pass in the command so it's going to be npx uh prisma uh migrate and then uh we, we, let me just go back and check the command so prisma migrate and then uh dev hyphen hyphen name and then finally passing the name of the migration you see this migration is just called init so at initial migration so once you run that is going to go ahead and generate our migration for us so that's done and you can see the migration is generated in this uh folder right here so let's go back into our vs code now you can see uh, in our in our prisma we used to have, all have the in our prisma uh, prisma folder we used to only have the the schema dot prisma but now you can see we have two different uh, we have the following so we have uh dev dot db which is this what the database that is specified inside of our database you're all right here we also have the let me just close this up we also have the the migrations folder which is right here and you can open up these migrations and view stuff also you can see this is the sql file for this so whatever code that you have written inside of our schema has been converted into an sql light uh, uh sql light query code which is right here so that's basically it so great so once we have that done uh we can take a look at the sql more if you want so that's basically it in case also we have our database here and also have our journal uh, db dev the journal right, right here uh so yeah that's basically it so once we have all this done uh one thing we need to know we can go ahead and actually interact with this database that i just created for ourselves okay so uh let me just go back to the slides and let's see what's next on the list so uh, running our code uh, we need to install uh, we need to install node mode to run our code so i'm just going to go ahead and install node mode. so npn 
uh, npm install uh, node node mon just like that and then simply run that so that's going to go ahead and install node mode and once node mode, in, node mode is installed we can actually go ahead and check into our scripts in our package.json file and then include this in there so let's go back in there uh, okay node mode, node mode is installed so uh, i'm going to go back into of my package.json under scripts right here i'm just going to call this one uh, i'm going to say run dev just like that and i'm going to simply say node mode and then script.js so node Mount uh, and then um, script dot js just like that. So this one we run we run uh, npn uh, run and then run dev is going to run this uh, script right here. So great. So once we have that done, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And uh, yeah, so let's look at this. It's actually giving me a bit of error. So uh, type script and there's that. Let me just make sure that I call up, I copy this from the official documentation properly. Yeah, that's basically it. So that's all we need. So copy this and then let's go back and just paste it here one more time so copy and paste this right here so great so once we have that done that's all we need to do and let's just close this file for now sometimes uh, vs code has an issue with this so, so what you have to do sometimes is just open close and uh, open up your vs code so i'm going to close it up and then i'm going to go in here and just simply open up my vs code again so i'm going to cancel this and open up code again so there yeah. and then let me just move it to uh another window right here so great okay so now that uh, uh that error is gone so sometimes you have to open up and uh, or close vs code again to fix uh, those uh, errors okay so that's just something you have to do okay uh so one that once that we have that there like we can go ahead and actually now interact with our, our database and stuff like that so uh one thing you also need to go ahead and set up so i'm just going to go back to a few documentation we need to uh, we need to have a couple of things uh, ahead uh, set up here to in order to uh, write the code so i'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this we already have this already generated for us when you're when you're in prisma generate you already generated for us that so i'm just going to go ahead and paste the rest of the code in here good so great so i'm just going to write ahead and save this so once it's formatted properly so this way we're going to write our code to interact to our prisma client to create our database and do the cloud functionality so that's basically it so the rest of the things here remain as they should so it's going to create a connection uh it's going to, to it's going to disconnect connections in case uh, we have any errors and stuff like that so yeah that's basically it uh so great so in here you can just simply run our code in here okay so uh the first thing i want us to go ahead and do is actually uh learn to add users into our, our database so how do we add a user to our database okay so uh let me just look bring back the schema file right here so to add a user we need the, the username right we need the the, the id of the user with email of the user the name of the user and then the profile uh the profile of the user so uh the profile we can create the profile right here so let's actually learn how to add a user to our database so um to add a user to our data basically very very simple to do so what i'm going to go ahead and do let me just uh, add a bit of comment here you say uh i just say uh, add user so add user so add user we're going to do, say const uh const you're going to go ahead and say const you're going to say const uh user is going to be equal to await you're going to await this process it's supposed it's going to be in a synchronous process so it's going to say prisma dot user dot uh create just like that and then simply pass in the following right here so what we need to go ahead and we're going to pass in the data field and the data field is going to be the following so uh we're going to go ahead and pass in the following so we're going to say the name of the user is going to be equals to uh let's say uh let's say john doe so say john uh doe just like that and then you're going to have the email of that user and email of that user is going to be let's say john uh doe at uh, gmail.com at gmail dot com so once you have the email also you need to pass in the age of that user so you say age and you can see all of that is defined inside of the schema right here. so i'm passing the name the email and then the age okay so the age of the user let's say that the john doe is let's say 25 okay 25 years old so that's it and then yeah that's going to basically if you run this code it's going to go ahead and simply add this into our database for us so i can also go up ahead and say specify the select field and the select field is going to go ahead and return the data that you want to select back so i want to say we want to get the, the id of the user after the the insert operation is successful we want to get the name of the user so you say the name is also true right the name is also true we also want to get the email of that user and the email is also we would say that will be true so once we insert the data into our database then you're going to select these fields and return it back to us it's going to be stored in the user object right here so once we have that done we can just go ahead and run the command uh, to, to create the user so uh, one thing you can also do is that you can also go ahead and add in the profile of the user at the same time so i'm just going to go down here and then down here i'm going to say i'm going to say const uh const user profile and it's going to be equals to await uh prisma prisma dot uh prisma dot user dot 
uh, update so we're just going to use the update function now don't worry about the update function i'll explain it later on in the, in the tutorial as we go along so we're going to say update where uh, we're going to update where the user dot um the user dot uh the user uh sorry sorry where the where the id equals to so user dot id just like that and you're going to pass in the data that you want to pass in okay don't worry about all of this i'll just explain later on uh, in depth okay so we're going to pass in the profile of the user so we're going to create a profile for this user and the profile is going to be have the following so we're going to say create right so create right there and you're going to say create the following so uh we're going to go ahead and pass in the profile pic the profile pic of the user and this could be any any picture that you want so let's just go ahead and try to get some uh, random pictures from online okay uh let me just search for pictures online so pics let's take that let's say for pics online so let's just go in here uh let me just find any random picture that you can use so uh i think this is fine you can just use this one right here i'm just going to go ahead and get the url for this image and i'm passing the url as a profile image okay uh, this is just to demonstrate for you um oh let me click the wrong button so it's going to be copy uh, image image address and then just go back in here and in here i'm just going to use that email uh the, the image address right here paste it right here so yeah this is going to be the profile picture of that user and also you can go ahead and provide in uh, the profile picture it says this schema this right here so profile pic and you're also providing the 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 location of the user the location and just say that this location is say nairobi because i'm currently in nairobi just like that nairobi and uh, go back in here nairobi and then we can also pass in the 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 join date of the user so the join uh join date and the join date is going to be of type it's going to be a new date object in javascript so just like that that's all we need so once i have this i think i forgot the semicolon sorry comma right here so once i have that comma inserted now everything is inserted is great so also what to, let me just explain to you what you have done so far in here simply inserting a user into our database and then you add you're adding an id to that uh you're adding a profile user for that user so that user is going to have a profile attached to uh the user id so we're going to add in uh, an id where the user where the where we're going to add in a profile information where the id is going to be the user id and the user is the currently user that we got in here and you're getting his id and that we're trying to access that id from right here and you're passing the data right here which is going to be a profile we're creating a profile information which is going to be the profile picture of the user the location of the user and then the join date of the user which is going to be a new date object so that's a bit uh, tricky to do uh, there are other ways to do this but i just want to show you how to do it this way i'll show you the other ways to do it okay so in here that's how we are just creating a user so if you just want to create a user without the profile picture then all you have to do is or without the profile image or without the profile information rather all you have to do is run this code right here it is going to create for you a user and then return the user back to you so in here you can just simply console uh console uh console dot log and then passing the user right here so it's going to go ahead and create uh, create the user and then simply print out the user information so this code right here is just to update the user information and then simply add a profile to that user okay so if you don't want to add a profile you just want to create a user solely then this is all all you have to do okay but i also want to create a user so i'm just going to go ahead and simply uh, uncomment this and you can also do the select if you want here, but i'm not going to do any select statement i'm just going to go ahead and simply console uh, dot log and then we say the user profile just like that so great so once we have that i'm just going to save this and then go back into my database and then clear the database up and once i'm in i'm just going to do uh, uh sorry <laughs> i'm running python actually it's not supposed to be python so i'm just going to run npm uh run uh, run dev so i'm just so used to running python so we have an error right here it says that um uh it says we have an error instead of our uh internal error modules uh loader throw error uh code not found yeah so the reason why we're getting this error is because i made a mistake in my file so i just took some time to examine the code and realized i made a mistake right so this is not supposed this is not supposed to be a javascript file it's supposed to be actually a typescript file so when you say dot tx right here so we need to say dot tx right here and once we have that i can just go ahead and save this and you can see now this uh the uh, the config file uh now ties ts config file actually now got fixed so it was not about just closing vs code and open it back as i said earlier on i actually forgot to name this as a typescript file but sometimes i'll show you later on that sometimes you need to close the vs code and open it back up to solve that error but for now make sure this file is just typescript file and that was the cause of the error so once you have that fixed uh, uh, out of the way let's go back to package.json and now this is going to 
be a TypeScript file, so not a JS file anymore. So it's a TypeScript file. So once I have that, I'm also going to go ahead and save this. And now I have uh, everything set up. Now I can just go back in here, close this, clear the terminal, and then run this code again. So now uh, we have the same error right here. So uh, it says you can find this file right here. So I wonder what's the cause of this error. So um, just close this up again. Uh, check up my VS code. So this actually is scripts.js and not uh, scripts.js. So sorry for that. It's actually script.js and not uh, story.tx, script.tx and not scripts.tx. Uh, so sorry for that error. And uh, yeah, once you have that, I can go back in here. Hopefully I don't have any more errors. And once we run this, it's going to go ahead and run our, uh, our database query. So you can see it went ahead and added a user. And the username, the user ID was this ID right here. And the username was John, John Doe. And the email was John Doe at gmail.com. And then you can also add a profile for that user, right? So we have added the profile information for that user and uh, all that information is right here. So great, that's just how you can simply run a call to add information into your database. So now you can have, you can see now we have our user information simply added. So sorry for all that errors. So uh, this has to be a TypeScript, a TypeScript file. And also uh, this has to be also in here. Just make sure that you are, is it also, sorry, instead of your um, migrate file, sorry, instead of your package.json file, is nodemon.txt. Uh, script dot uh, dot ts okay so the ts script okay great so sorry for all that error so now that's uh, our errors are solved and you can see how you can add users to our database and stuff like that so let me just go ahead and um, open up another uh, another uh, terminal right here and instead of this terminal i'm just going to make this to be a bit bigger so uh, in here i'm just going to just deactivate my conda uh, environment so if you don't have conda don't worry this is just for me okay so once i have this done i'm just going to go ahead and say npx uh, prisma uh, pris prisma studio just like that and run this again so um uh np sorry it's gonna be npx and not npm so npx prisma studio and it's going to go ahead and simply start the uh, prisma studio for us and prisma studio is just a, a user interface that you can interact with your databases and other stuff like that using prisma so let's go ahead and say we want uh or, or let's say we have the you want the, the profile the user profile so one the user model right here so you can see we have one user added in there it's 8025 has a profile his name uh, email is the uh, and then we have all this information if you look at the profile of that user you can see we have a user profile also here so this user joined on this date and you can see also the user id also right here so you can see all that information right here inside of our database so if you click on the user it's going to turn to the user is john doe at the age is 25 and then all that information so great so if you go in here and just click the user profile it's going to return to use the user profile of that specific user so that's how you can simply add users to your database right here okay okay great so once i have that done uh, i'm just going to go ahead and uh, i think i want to move this prisma studio to another window so i'm just gonna yeah so we have everything set up as we as you should be so now i have all my things set up and we have also prisma studio uh studio running so great that's how you can use prisma studio just by running the uh, npx prisma studio to open up prisma studio for your project so great so we have learned how to add users to our database so now let's go ahead and try to run this code one more time but i'm going to assure you that this is going to fail and that's why it's going to fail is that the unique constraint of the code are going to fail right because uh, if you want the unique constraint right email must be unique username must be unique right so those constraints are going to fail and that's what is causing that error so let's actually change this to be uh janet though and it's going to be uh janet uh janet let me just go ahead and fix that so it'll be janet though janet and then at gmail.com so you have all this and this is going to be in nairobi so once we have this we're just going to go ahead and uh, stop my development server clear the terminal and then run it again so once you have that done it's going to go ahead and add the new user okay uh the email constraint has filled the name the name has filled so um, uh i think it ran this before i actually even added information to our database so let me just go back in here and then simply refresh this so you can see i have the user uh it, 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 it went ahead and added it quickly before i even updated this information so i'm just going to go here and just delete this record and then delete the record so uh so we have an issue right here failed to commit invalid prisma dot user to delete uh, foreign key constraint field the reason why foreign key constraint field is first of all we need to delete that profile of that specific user and the profile of that specific user is this one right if i take the user it's going to be for uh janet janet do so i want to delete the profile user for janet do so sorry this is going to be for yeah good so i'm just going to go ahead and delete the profile user for janet do so this is going to be if you check the user is this for janet do i just want to go ahead and delete that record so delete the record and then delete that record and if i go back to the user now i can delete uh, the user as well being deleted so great great so we have that right there and uh, this one the profile also information has been tempered with so let me just go back and add the user information this is going to be john Doe. just like that and then simply run that so yeah so i'm going to go ahead and save my changes 
yeah so that's what we have so uh close this and this we have the janet uh, john doe which is this profile picture is this information right here so now let's go ahead and tell you run the query again to add that information back into a database so i'm just going to stop this clear the terminal and then run this one more time so it's going to go ahead and simply and add uh okay we still have our constraint field uh the name constraint has been filled i don't know why it's, uh, it's failing let's just go here and just simply refresh this uh, profile refresh this uh, it's failing to add it but for now uh, it, it always disturbs whenever I've, when i have node one uh, running so i'm just going to go ahead and simply go ahead and run this manually again so don't be jan yeah, let's add another user so it's going to be let's say uh helen helen thomas uh, let me just add a uh, name here so helen thomas and it's going to be helen thomas at gmail.com so we say helen uh helen thomas uh helen thomas at gmail.com and then every information is going to be the same so i'm just going to back and then run the code again so now should we go ahead and simply add uh helen into our database and let me just stop this again let's go ahead and add a couple more users so let's also add another user here called let's say um let's say thomas uh thomas d uh thomas d just some theoretical name so thomas d uh and then i'm going to change this here part to be test uh as test here at test.com and then just uh, go ahead and change the location of this uh, user let's say new york uh, the user is in new york just like that and then simply go ahead and uh, run the code again so run the code again and that's going to go ahead and add that user to our database oh, great so now we should have a couple of users to our database if i go in here and then simply refresh this now you can see we have this uh users here in here as, as long with along with their profile so this is going to be for profile for thomas and all of that uh, information right there so great okay great so now we have all that information uh passed in right there so uh great so once we have all that we can go ahead and uh, head and uh, actually learn another way to add this user information into our database so another way you can add use user information to our database is by uh doing something else we can do we can also add the user information through a second approach so i'm just going to go ahead and comment all this uh, code out because you don't actually need this code anymore so we're going to go ahead and uh, let me just delete it just to keep the code clean so delete this uh, i hope you guys have that typed out already so once i delete this uh, in here i'm just going to go ahead and pass in another information so i'm going to, going to have a constant so i'm going to say const and it's going to be add a user uh, profile and this is going to be a function it's going to be equals to await uh, prisma dot uh, profile dot um, create right here so using the profile dot create and then you're going to go ahead and create the user uh, user profile right here so i'm going to go ahead and pass in this so that's how you can create a user profile and you need to pass in the data field and the data is going to be the following so the data is going to be the the you need to pass in the user id so it's a user id and the user id needs to be an actual user id so um this is going to go up here uh let me just see if i can go up here uh, user id right here so let me just go into the prisma uh, front end and from here you can also go ahead and uh add databases from uh, inside of the prisma database right here so uh let me just go ahead and add in a user so i'm just going to say add new record and you can just go ahead and save the changes right here so this user this record you're going to give it a name so let's say um uh let's say janet do so janet do and then in here we need to provide in the email so it will be janet uh do at gmail gmail.com so gmail.com and then the age, say the age is going to be, let's say, uh, 30. So Janet Do is 30. Great. So once we have that, I'm going to go ahead and save this, save that record. So you can see now Janet Do has no profile. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a profile for that Janet Do. So we need the ID of Janet Do to attach a profile to. So you can select the ID of Janet Do, go back into my VS Code, and then for, for the ID, we're going to pass in the ID right there. So great. And then for the profile uh, profile picture, I just need to pass in the profile picture. And you can also get this, the, the, profile picture, the, profile picture, the profile picture that you have been using. So I'm just going to go in here and then select all that profile picture and then simply use it in here. Great. So uh, once you have the profile picture, I also want to pass in the location. So location, let's say um, the, the Islam. So Dar Islam is just a city right here uh, in East Africa. So Dar Islam. Uh, Dar es Salaam, and I'm going to pass in the join date. So the join date is going to be new date object. So new date, just like that. So new date object, just like that. So uh, yeah, that's basically what we need to do. So once I have that done, uh, I can just go simply go ahead and uh, pass in the information. So I'm just going to go ahead and simply run this query. And what it's going to go ahead and do is going to create for us user. So you can also go ahead and uh, console dot log, and then you can log that. Uh, add user information profile information and you can also select the fields that you want to get back so you can say select 
and then you can select a plot field so let's say you want the id it's going to be true you want the um, location it's going to be true you want the join date it's going to also going to be true just like that so that's that's what we need to do and once we have that i can just save this code and then go back into my terminal instead of my terminal i'm just going to go ahead and do uh npn run run dev again and that should go ahead and add that user into our database so you can see it has been added and the information that you specify has been returned to us okay so great so now, we have that, now that you have that information great you can use uh, this information for different variety of things so uh yeah so if you go back now uh, that's how you can create a profile picture and also attach the user id to that profile picture okay so that's another way to do it okay so great so once we have all that done uh that's good so now let me just go ahead and show you how we can go ahead and you can also create multiple users uh if you want but uh for 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 you can use create and then create many create many right here and then for, for this is going to be a list so then we have a list and then uh close that also list uh you, if, if you're creating many you, don't, you cannot do select because if you cannot do select uh just pass in this way and then you can pass in another uh create information so you can select all this right here uh write all of this color select it and you can paste it right here as well so select save that as well and you can write you can run create many but create many doesn't work for an sql light database if you're using something like a postgres database then create many is going to work for you but if you're using a uh, sql light database there's no create uh function right here so it doesn't exist for sql light databases but if you're using other databases like uh postgres i know progress postgres it works i'm not sure about mongodb but it works on postgres so yeah so that's basically it how you can create the profile information as well so great so once you are we have that out of the way i'm just going to go ahead and delete that information so great now you can we have learned how to add users how to add profile pictures of the corresponding users and stuff like that so great that's how we need to go oh, that's all we need to cover in one-to-one -one relationships and you can see all that information on the prisma uh on the prisma uh prisma website right here so if i refresh this now you can see this uh user uh, uh let me just go in here the user uh janet Dondal has a profile and the profile picture it, profile information is as we specified to say dar islam and all that information great so uh that's how you can use one-to-one -one relationships uh in post uh in my SQLite databases whenever i work with uh uh uh, prisma okay so now uh you have look, 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 really looked at prisma studio and also now let's look at how to uh, create a profile uh, profile uh, making the profile selection optional and now to make the profile uh, selection optional to do that you're simply going to go ahead and simply pass in a query parameter uh, sorry uh, a question mark it means that this is going to be uh, optional so if you need it to be compulsory you need to pass in a list right so you need to pass in a list right here but for now this question mark is going to make it to be optional that's basically it so great so now let's look at um, many to one to many relationships so one to many relationship for example let's say that a user can have multiple posts right and each post can only belong to one user but one user can have multiple posts and that's an example of one one to many relationships and uh, the, the definition for one to one relationship is right here one record uh one record on one side can be related to zero or multiple records on the other side that's an example of one to one relationship so uh to create a one-to-one -one relationship uh, we're going to have a post and a user so each user can have one multiple post but each post can only belong to one user so user can have zero or more posts a post must have a one and only one outer right so great so we're going to create a, pro, a, prof, uh, a post um, a schema so we're going to have a, each post we're going to have an id a title a content published uh, published at created uh, created at and also the outer id so let's go ahead and do that so let's go in here so in here i'm just going to go ahead and create the, the schema for you so i'm just going to go into my schema right here and to do this we just have to use the same approach so we say uh, uh model and then you specify the name of that model right so the same same approach to use to create this model so for post model you say post and then it's going to have uh, uh the values right here so uh, each post is going to have a post uh, it's going to have an id so when you say id is going to be of type id and it's going to be the default uh default sorry the type is going to be of string rather so let me say the type string and it's going to have an attribute of id and it's going to have an attribute of default and default means you id just like that so once you have that post so once you have the id we also need a title of the post so each post also needs to have a title and the title is going to be of type string okay okay and uh, we're also going to have a content content of the post right the, the post content which will be of also type of string okay and you're going to say published uh published 
published uh, published and the publish is going to be a boolean so it's going to be either it's published or it's not published and by default you can specify a default uh, attribute right here so you can say default and default is going to be false right by default all posts are not published unless the user decides to publish them right so something like that so you can say created at so created uh created and you can say created is going to be of type date time and by default is going to be default is going to be now okay so each post is going to have a default of created now so if you don't pass in the created at it's going to default to now now okay so that's how the default can be used okay so once we have that i'm also going to go ahead and specify the outer of the post because we're trying to create a relation between the post and the uh, the post table and the user table and it's going to be a one-to-many relationship because one user can have multiple posts but one post can only belong to uh, each post can belong to one and only one user so we're going to say outer and outer is going to be of type user and you're going to say have the relationship attribute size relationship you're going to say field and the field is going to be uh outer uh id outer id as we specified in this diagram right here so it's going to be outer id okay and the outer id is going to be we're going to create that field just in a second and it references the id instead of the, the user table so it's going to reference the id of the user table right here so let's go ahead and create this uh, outer uh, outer uh, uh, id table so we say outer uh, so outer id field rather so outer id is going to be of type string just like that so uh that's basically it uh that's basically it how you can have it and this must not be unique because it's a one-to-one -one relationship each post can have multiple each each post uh, uh, sorry many posts can have uh, the same outer right so that's a one to many relationship so once we have that then you can see we have an error right here. and there's why we have an error right here. we also have to specify the relationship instead of the user table so instead of the user table we're going to go ahead and say we have a folder called post which is going to be all the posts for this specific user and it's going to be of type post and it's going to be compulsory like each user must have one or zero post right so that's basically it and you can just say that uh it's uh at reference relates and then we can say relates to uh, uh outer relationship so we can specify the outer relationship just in a second right here and the reason why we're going to specify an outer relationship is because um for now this is going to work let me okay, let me just explain for now this is going to work but for i also want to add in another kind of relationship because uh, a user can like post and each, uh, each post can be liked by multiple users that's also an example of one to many relationship right so i'm going to have a, uh, another field right here and you can say liked uh, by and liked by is going to be of type user it's going to be optional right a user can like a post or a user cannot like a post so it's going to be optional and you can add in the related fields so you can say relate relation and you're going to add you give it you're going to give it this relationship a field so you're going to say fields and you're going to say uh liked by id so liked uh, by id and you're going to say it references and it's going to references the id of the user field so it's going to reference the id of the user field now when you're providing the liked id field so liked uh by id and this is going to be of type string and it's also going to be optional so great so that's why we have that right here so you can see we still have this error right, uh, error right here and for this relationship we need to also need to attach it to the user table so you can set a user table and you can say the likes uh, the post that is user like so you can say uh liked uh sorry it's gonna be uh liked so it's gonna be liked posts uh, like posts and it's going to be of type post object right here it's going to be compulsory as well so you can see now we have these two relation we have this relationship configured right here and you can say it uh, at relay relation now you can see that we have an error right here and the reason why we have an error right here is because we're having two relationships right here and you're going to say all of them they relate to the post tables let me just remove this relation attribute for now let me just explain to you just in a bit of depth so we have the post uh field right here and you think that it relates to the user the the post the post uh, table but which of this relation it does it relate to because we have two relationships relations uh, relationships right here we have the like relationship and also have the outer relationship so uh if you say liked post is it talking about uh the outer or an actual liking of the post so we have to actually specify that because we have two relationships we have to tell uh prisma which relationship we want to, it to be so we want the 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 at post to be related to the uh, say relationship we want it to relate to the outer the outer relationship we want to this one to deal with the outer relationship so i'm going to go in here and add in a name for this relationship so i'm going to go and say outer uh, relationship so outer relationship and i'm going to copy the outer relationship copy it and i'm going to go ahead and specify it right here good so once we have this done now we also need to specify the relation for the post so uh post and i'm going to go ahead and say at relationship and i'm going to go ahead and specify the relationship right here and you're going to go in here passing the relationship name so uh if you if you ask me specifying relationships we know uh 
Prisma knows which relationship we're talking about right here. So we're going to go ahead and specify the name. I'm going to say uh, this is going to be post, uh, sorry, liked, uh, liked uh, relation, relationship, uh, like relationship, and then simply copy this right here and go in here and paste it right here and then simply save all of this information so once we have all of this saved uh, that's done basically we have everything done uh, right here so uh, that's basically what we need to do uh, to specify all of this so that's all we need to do so we have the uh, the relationship right here so now what if we say post we know the uh, uh, prisma knows that we're talking about this relationship right here of the outer and the post if you say liked by and you can uh, if you say like post then it's going to know that we're talking about the like relationship which is this one right here so that's how you get an example of how we can create a one-to-many relationship okay so now let's go ahead and try to create a uh, uh let me just go ahead and actually try to create a, uh, a data a record in here we're going to be going to create a post and then attach that post to a specific user that's what we're going to go ahead and do so we go back into our script.js file in here and inside of our script.js file we can go ahead and specify uh, the relationship right uh, create a post and then attribute a post to a given user so to do that is actually uh, a bit simple to do so it's just like we have done the, the things before it's the same thing we're going to go ahead and do here so just say uh create a comment comment and say create uh posts just like that so i'm going to say const uh const and i'm going to say post is equals to await uh i'm going to say prisma uh, prisma dot uh post uh prisma dot post dot create uh, dot create and then simply go uh, we're going to go ahead and in here and pass in the following so prisma dot post dot create so once we do this right now okay good i forgot one part so we haven't migrated our database because we have created this schema right here but the table hasn't not been created so to do this we have to actually write run again our migration to, to actually create so we have to run again this command to actually run our migration so we just go in here and say uh, npm uh npm we just go ahead and see that command again so uh npx prisma migrate so npx npx uh, prisma migrate dev and you can give it a name that have a name and you can say second migration just like that and simply run this so it's going to go ahead and uh, create for us those uh, migrations and create for us the table so now great so if you go back and you can see our second migration you can open it up and you can see we have also that our post table being created right here so you can see that relationship right here so now we have our database migrated so i'm just uncomment out this code so uncomment it out and once you uncomment it out you can see prisma.migrate if you just click or uh, i think control in this one it should work it should, it's not working yeah so one th sometimes you have an error like this what you need to do is just try to go ahead and save the file if you save the file and the error still exists what you can do is just close your vs code and then go into your terminal and then simply open up vs code again or whatever editor that you're using sometimes it uh, brings that issue so yeah sometimes it can be really tedious and boring but yeah it's just some migration we're doing migration so it's not that uh bad so yeah so that's basically it so now if you say prisma.post.create and now we need to pass in the data field so we say data and the data you need to pass in the following so we need to pass in the title right the title is going to be um uh let's say uh, what title should we say let's say my first post title right so uh that's the, that's the, that's the title and i'm going to pass in the content and the content is going to be uh my first post content let's say my uh, first post uh content just like that and you're going to also going to go ahead and have the outer uh, id and the outer id is going to be the id of the outer so let me just go into back into my prisma and then get the outer id so let's actually say users and then get the uh, id for uh, helen uh, helen helen thomas so helen thomas is going to be the one creating uh this specific post i'm going to go ahead and pass in the id of helen thomas in there and uh, i'm also going to go ahead and say published and the publish is also going to be um, published you're going to say uh, by default it's going to be false so let's just leave that to be false or let's just pass it to be true for now let's say it's true and then yeah so once that's all we need to uh, insert a post into our database so we have the post title we have the um, the content of the post right and then you also have the the outer id and then when that post was published or not and it's going to go ahead and use the schema to insert that into our database created that is also is going to be uh, auto generated for us to the now current time the outer id you already specified the outer id the post like you're not going to type whether the post was liked by anyone you can leave that to be blank for now later on you can add that field if you want like if a person clicks the button you can update the post liked by okay yeah so that's basically it and once we have you can specify what you want to select back or what you want to include okay so you can say include or select i say you can say include 
or select in here so i'm just going, I'm just going to go ahead and say select and then pass in the fields that i want to be returned back to me so i want the id and that's going to be true i want the the title of the post and that's going to be true uh, i want the um, published uh it's going to be true as well i also want the created uh created and created is going to be true and i also want the outer id and the outer id is going to be true so that's like that so once we have this done i'm just going to go uh yeah, down here and then simply do console.log and then console.log uh posts post right here. and this is just a post object right here which is going to return to us this field that is specified right here so that's once we run this code is going to go ahead and insert this into our database so uh let's go ahead and actually go back into my vs code uh, sorry my terminal and then simply do uh npm run run dev and then simply run this code and that's going to go ahead and insert the data information information into our database so you can see we have the information being inserted we get back the id the first post the the published the created that and all that information and let me check if my prisma studio is running yeah it is running so i'm just going to go back and then just go back one step back so if i go ahead and uh, add another field now you can see let me try to refresh this okay uh it doesn't show up so if it doesn't show up the, the best thing you can do actually go ahead and uh, restart your your your, your prisma studio again so just go ahead and restart it so i'm stop it hitting control and c clear my terminal and then restart it again okay now once you open up you can go ahead and simply click on the post now the post shows up now you can see the post we have the first post content and it belongs to the user helen uh helen thomas right here so helen thomas has that on that post yeah that's basically it, how you can create the different post content so let's go actually go ahead and let me just uh, create another post for uh okay it's okay uh, i think here i have the same emails uh this is a bit of difference with uh yeah this is a test and this is on its gmail okay so let me also create another post information for uh john doe so i'm just going to copy that and go back into my uh in here let me just go out and make sure that my uh my node mode is not running because sometimes can be funny and inc include data that you don't want it to include so i'm going to paste it here and then it's going to be published you can say false it's not published so once we have that done i'm just going to go out and simply run the code again uh npm uh, run run dev and then you can see it has been inserted properly great so i can go back into my vs code um let me just add another user this is going to be second uh second post and this is going to be my second post content and it's going to be published it's going to be true just like that and then you can go ahead and run this code again and that's going to go ahead and insert that post into the database so i just want to insert a post for a couple of users so let's go ahead and insert the post for uh janito one more time one more post and just copy that and then simply go back in here so in here i'm just going to go ahead and change the user id to the one of uh helen Doe. so let post that in there and then just uh post that yeah so i'm just going to post that so uh, i'm just going to go in here and then run the command again so run npm run run dev and then run that so that's going to go ahead and insert that into our database so great so we have all that record uh, specified in there so um, let's, let's change it to be first uh first uh it's not gonna be first and also it's gonna be uh change that to be also first just like that and let's just run this one more time again i know it's a repetitive stuff for so this include a couple of users into our database great so once we have that users that's all we have to do so that's how you can include users uh post into your database and or post information different post information uh into your uh, database so now we have the users and they are attached to different posts right so great so once we have that done great we are done with uh, one or uh, we are done with uh a one to many relationship whereby one user can have multiple posts like in this case this user has two posts and uh yeah they, they each post belong to only one specific user and if you go to the prisma uh prisma studio you can actually go ahead and see that information so you can see uh this post belong to you can still say this post post belongs to uh the Jan janet doe and if this post belongs to let's see also uh john doe so let me see if i can see another post and this also post belongs to thomas thomas and let's see this post and this post belongs to john doe so you can see john doe has too many uh, two posts this one right here and uh, this one right here and all belonging to john doe so you can see one user uh, one user has a uh, one user has many posts but each post belongs to one specific user and that's an example of one to many relationship 
yeah so that's how you can create a one-to-many relationship in a prisma using the, the prisma schema so let's see what's next ahead so let's look at how to create one many to many relationship so okay let's see that let's just give you a quick example so let's imagine that you're a student right or a student in a college or something so one student can take many courses and uh, one course can be taken by many students so that's a many many to many relationship so one student can take many courses one course can be taken by many students right so uh, you can have 20 students doing computer science and you can have computer science being done by 20 students that's an example of what are many to many uh, relationship and let's see uh, in this case you're going to have a field called nationality like a, a table called nationality so one user can be, uh, many users can belong to uh, maybe the u.s and national can have a nationality of the united states and the uh, united states can have many multiple citizens right so that's an example of many to many relationships so let's see how you can implement many to many relationships in um many to many relationships in prisma and one input uh, one good advantage of many to many relationship in prisma to, in, to implement a many many to many relationship you need a joint table or what is also called a bridge table or a pivot table so uh and if you're writing a SQL, a SQL code from scratch you have to write the joint table yourself and this can be tedious to do but if you're using uh prisma prisma automatically creates uh joint uh the joint table the pivot table or the bridge table for you so you don't have to worry about all of that and creating a many to many relationship in prisma is uh uh finally simple extremely simple i also even surprised when i was learning prisma it is that simple to create a many to many relationship because i thought you have to create a joint table and prisma does that for you so you don't have to create a joint table so uh, enough of the, the the introduction let's just get into it and see how you can create a many to uh many to many relationships so let me just make sure that okay uh, my uh, my my node one is not running so i'm just going to go in here and i'm going to create a nationality a nationality uh field and a nationality field what is going to a nationality table is going to have the nationality of a person right so nationality and you're going to connect the nationality table to the user table right here so i think i have a graph of that if i'm not mistaken yeah so i have a nationality and i have the user table so well nationalities are connected to the user table right so one user can have many nationalities and uh, one user can have one nationality but one nationality many users can have the same nationality and uh, one nationality can have many users right many to many relationships so i hope that's not confusing so uh, let's go ahead and actually do that so uh, the nationality table or model needs to have an id a name and email uh, sorry i actually made a mistake right here i actually made a mistake while designing this table so a nationality can only have uh sorry a name an id and name that's basically it and the user field which is when we connect into a user so i actually made an error designing this table so sorry for that error uh i'm just going to go we're go, going to go ahead and uh, implement that so i think i just copied the user table and pasted it twice and just change this to nationality i forgot to change the other one so sorry for, sorry for that uh error so i'm just going to go ahead and actually create the nationality table right here so when you say model uh model and the model is going to be nationality nationality so nationality and it's going to have the following so i'm going to say id and the id is going to be of type string so string and it's going to be have a, a uid and then a default and it's going to be uuid just like that and i'm also going to have a name and a name is going to be string uh it's going to be hyphen unique just like that and i'm also going to have users and the user is going to be a user a user field and then just like that so that's what how you can create a many to many relationship but you're not yet done you can see here we still have an error right here so the reason we're having an error is that we didn't specify the relationship inside of the user table as well so you have to go into the user table and then pass in nationality right here so say natural nationality and the nationality is going to be of type nationality uh, nationality just like that and then this right there. so that's all we need to create the many to many relationship so uh, in the background uh Prism is going to go ahead and create for us a joint table or the pivot table, and that is going to be used to map the relationships together. So if you want a, a joint table, is basically you're going to take the user ID and then the nationality ID. So we're going to attach those two instead of their own separate table. And that's an example of a, a, a joint table or a pivot table, also called a bridge table. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's basically what we need to do to set up our nationality. So now let's go ahead and actually run our migration to make sure you have this database set up. So uh, I'm just going to go in here and uh clear the terminal uh, clear the terminal so clear the terminal i'm going to npx uh prisma prisma migrate and then uh, dev and then hyphen hyphen name you can say third uh third migration 
migration just like that so we run this and it's going to go ahead and create for us that migration so that once we have that done if you go back into our vs code you can see now we should have uh, another migration file right here so you can see folder right here and it has the nationality information right here and you can see it has all the the joint tables and all the other stuff created for us right here so uh, that's really good so you don't have to do anything to get all that code done so that's why using a uh, uh pr using a prisma is really productive M imagine we had to type all this out ourselves that would take a long time and thinking to do so that's basically it how you can create of that prism uh, that's that uh sch that schema for the nationality so once we have this i can go actually let me just remove this uh, now, now that we have this setup i'm just gonna go ahead and delete that okay okay so once we have this now um it's going to go ahead and say uh, again you have to go ahead and open it and, and close uh vs code again to to have uh to have uh the the, the, the new uh changes being detected in here so let me before before we do that let me just go ahead and actually uh create the nationality for uh a nation so let's say add we need to add a comment to add nationality and then you're going to say const uh nationality nationality is going to be equals to uh await uh await prisma prisma dot uh nationality national nationality dot dot create uh get okay, a create and then simply passing the date object right here okay now you can see now it's not uh this is giving us an error so the the easiest way to do this is just simply close up vs code and then simply open it up again so i'm just going to open up my vs code again or whatever editor that you're using so open up vs code again and let me just move vs code to a new window yeah so great so uh we have that there yeah. so yeah so now you can see now it's been working fine so for nationality we're putting the name of the nationality that's all we need to do and let's say that this nationality let's say kenyan okay kenyan so kenyan is just kenya so uh we can attach the information right so we're going to add a nationality called kenya and then you can attach the nationality to a different citizens okay so uh nationality you're going to say nationality is kenyan right here and uh, you can write the update query to add up that nationality of a citizen to it if you want but for now i'm just going to go ahead and do it in through uh, prisma so once i have the nationality added i want to select the following so i want to select uh the id of the nationality so true uh, i want the name of that nationality so true just like that so once i have those done i can just simply go ahead and do console dot log and then nationality just like that so it's going to go ahead and log out the nationality that you're going to go ahead and create so once we have that i'm going to go into my vs code and then clear the terminal and then simply run npx uh, npm run dev again uh, run run dev and then simply you can see now we, we have added a nationality called kenyan and then all that information right there so i'm just going to go ahead and stop the server and then go back into my vs code let's create also the us nationalities and then we we'll go back in here and then simply run that again so we're going to go ahead and uh, create uh, for us good so we can also go ahead and add uh, indian so um, india so yeah india uh, and just run that again and then uh, that should also go ahead and create for us that migration as well great so that's basically it how you can add uh, different amount more one to many relationship uh, sorry many to many relationship but right now we haven't you just added nationalities and uh, the user has not been attached to nationality right the nationality of the users has, been, has not been specified so you can actually go ahead and do this through the prisma uh you can also do it through the code you can update the user and uh, you can update the user information through the code so now we need to go ahead and actually close uh, close up this and go back into my terminal and then in here i'm going to stop prisma and then simply run prisma again sometimes it fails to pick up this uh, update so you have to run it again so you can see we have nationality right here so if i open it up now you can see we have nationality we have indian kenyan and uh, indian kenyan india and the u.s so you can go ahead and simply let me just update this is better to be kenya okay and then we can save those changes oh, great so we can actually add the uh, cities that belong to kenya so um uh, we can actually find the profile of those citizens uh yeah let's just let's say you can add some citizen uh information right so let's say helen i think helen is from let me just uh uncomment this let's say helen you look at helen uh look at the profile of helen thomas and then let's see so helen thomas new york so in new york is a u.s so if i go back to nationality and i say the u.s i can add helen thomas right here uh helen thomas okay i think i made a mistake right here so i, I, I think it, okay thomas thomas d and if i look at the profile thomas d from new york so thomas d if i go back to nationality i can go to the us and i can say thomas d right here and add thomas d right there so i can open up that and then i can save those changes so 
that's done you can see uh this closes up so you can see now thomas d is from the us so if i go to users we should now see thomas d is from the us uh, let's look at another user um uh, let's look at the user's profile right here uh this is for the user profile this is nairobi and his name is uh nairobi is helen thomas so you can go back into nationality we we'll go to kenya uh tom uh thomas helen thomas i think so helen thomas is going to be from nairobi and then simply save those changes and i can close this filtered view so great so we can see we can add all that information right here. and that's how you can have many to many relationships so let's look for another user who is from kenya as well so uh john doe john doe is from nairobi so go ahead and add nairobi is in kenya so you can go into kenya and then say john john doe so we can add that information right here and then save that information so you can see now close that filtered view so you can see now we have uh, multiple users that attached to the same nation and then the same nation one user can have okay uh, this is many to many relationship like one user has many nations and one nation can have man, many users right so yeah that's that's basically it for one to many uh, many to many relationships so uh that's basically it uh that's where we can create the many many to many to many relationships in our in our code so that's basically it for many many, many to many uh relationships so great so we have all that being uh, done being done for us uh, using the join table that prisma creates in the background so great so now let's look at what was next on our list so uh, we have run that migration already so now let's look at field attributes and uh, uh, fields uh, and the field attributes you're going to look at attributes basically so in uh, in prism we have two main types of attributes we have field attributes and we also have the block attributes so field attributes are going to be each for for each of the individual fields so if, if you look back into our schema table uh, these are the called the field attributes because they're only attached to each individual field we also have another type of attributes called the 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 diff the the block attributes and block attributes are attached to uh, the whole block so for example if you want to create a block attribute you can just say hyphen hyphen block and i can say index so index and you can pass in uh, id uh, let's say that we uh, we want an index as it based basing on the the title uh and the content of the post so we can have an index that again that, that can be generated on basing on the id uh combination of the id and the post so we can remove this as remove this and then you can use the index okay and that's just that's index that means useful for performance you can also have a uh, unique so unique so unique when we only say unique meaning that we need we want the title and the content should be combination of them to be unique right so two posts can have the same title but they can have the same content right so that's that's we can say the combination of these two must be unique so two posts can have the same title but they, they're not unique if they have different content but if they have the same content and they don't have the same title then they also don't they are also not unique they are also different posts but if they have the same title and the same content two posts then those two posts are, are the unique constraint you can fail so that's basically how you can do use unique uh, uh, block attributes so there are different block attributes that you can use uh in uh in prisma so the different block attributes we, get, we can use so we have the field attributes of id default updated and we have all this information right uh field that you can use here so you can use the uh, uh default the id the relationship all these are field attributes and you also have the block attributes like the unique one i sold you i showed you uh, earlier on we also have the uh, id attributes we also have the index attributes this is, uh, the index mostly for performance purposes as i said earlier on so these different attributes that you can use for uh, for migrating you can add the uh, different uh, field attributes block attributes rather or field attributes to your database and then the difference between field attributes and block attributes is that field attributes have only a single uh add sign in front of it but block attributes have a double add sign in front of it so that's the difference between uh uh field uh, field attributes and a block attributes okay so i hope that makes sense uh, in this in this place we're not actually going to be applying uh block attributes in this case but, but that's how you can use them in case you have need for them okay so good so uh, once we have that done we can look at filtering data so we can filter data in different ways you can use uh the different find find many unique we can also specify where where statements where order by skips uh take distinct greater than less and we have a lot of queries for uh for filtering data so let's go ahead over the basics first okay let's look at the method the methods the methods we can use to filter data which is going to be find many find unique and find first okay let's go ahead and use that in here so i'm going to go back into my vs code right here and in here i'm just going to go ahead and uh can delete this okay because we don't need it anymore so okay so once i have this, this done i'm just going to go ahead and uh, let's say that filtering data so uh let's say that uh find uh find find many find many uh many 
users right here so to do that you say const you say user uh let's say const users is going to be equals to uh await uh prisma oh sorry this is not uh, supposed to be like this so just uh delete this so say prisma dot uh users user the user dot you can say find many so you can say find you can see we have all this right here find many find unique find fast or true uh find find unique or true all of that so we're going to say just say find many and this is going to return to us all the users from our database and say console.log uh, and then pass in uh, users just like that so it's going to go ahead find all the users from our database and it's going to go ahead and return it to us so we can go ahead into our, uh, our terminal right here and then simply you can see we have all the users being returned to us so we can see we have um, all the users instead of our database which is how many users i think uh four users all of them being returned to us from our database and all about to have their ids their names their their the age and all that information so all of that information we have access to so you can also control what we get returned back here so you can say uh so let me just undo that so you can go ahead here and say uh select and then pass in the following so we can say select and you're going to go ahead and select the following so we're going to select we're going to select the name and name is going to be true you're going to select the the id the id is going to be true uh we want the email and the email is going to be true if you say you want the profile information is going to be true you want the nationality it's going to be true just like that so nationality is also going to be true just like that so once we run this query it's going to return to us all the users having this uh, fields being selected so once i have that i'm going to go into my fiasco uh, my terminal and then you can see you have all that being selected we have the nationality we have the profile the profile picture the information and all of that of the user being selected and that's how we can use multi uh, select many and select many we can use we can also specify tick like uh select okay say tick uh, let's say that you want to take only two it's going to return to us only two records instead of all the records so if you wait for this it's going to turn to us only two records instead of all the all the records so you're going to turn the, the first record and the second record right just two so that's how uh, uh tick works and you can say skip also you can say skip uh skip is going to go ahead and skip some of them so it's going to go ahead let's say you want to skip uh two uh so if, if you're taking two and you're skipping two uh let's see what we get so uh, uh let me just uh let's close this up and then run it again so let's wait for it so it's going to skip two and take the last two right so it's going to skip two the first two and it's going to go ahead and take the last two Right, that's basically how skip works so if you're going to go if you don't specify take and just say skip means it's going to skip the last the, the first two and it's going to return to us the last two ending and that's what basically what it's going to do right so yeah that's basically how skip uh, works and take works okay uh, how you can use skip and take you can also use distinct if you want so you can use them just comment this out you can use distinct so distinct uh how do you specify distinct yeah so to specify distinct you can just go ahead and say the distinct of the fields that you want so let's say let me find how you can use distinct here you can say distinct based on the location or distinct based on the name so distinct you can say distinct based on the name yeah so you say name uh age so we're going to return to us distinct names and ages so if you uh, check this it's going to return to us distinct name and uh, ages from our database yeah so that's again how we can also use distinct okay we'll look at this thing later on as we go along so uh okay so that's how you can use can write different queries so uh we can see we have said uh, select select many you can also specify the where clause and use where clause to control what you want to select and what you want to get back okay so let's see how you can use a uh, where clause and where clause is, is mostly used when you have you are selecting unique attributes okay so uh, so let's see how you can use uh uh, uh unique so okay, i'm just going to go in here uh I can just simply comment this out for now. Uh, let me just even delete it if I want. So uh, I think I just delete it for now. Just uh, select, uh, select. Let's look at unique, unique user, and then you're going to go and say const uh, user is going to be cost to uh, await uh, prisma dot user dot find unique. So find unique is going to return to you each unique user, right? So find unique and you're going to go ahead and return each unique user okay so find unique you're going to go ahead and pass in the object right here so passing an object and if i watch unique values you want so you can say where we're going to pass in the where close and then you're going to go ahead and say email and let's say email is ending let's say email is john doe at gmail okay 
at gmail so email uh, at john doe at gmail so it's going to return to us what, what unique where the user is uh, john doe so it's going to be the you find unique is used unique unique field so uh, the email is a unique field so we're going to just select where the user uh, the email is uniquely john doe and you can see i'm going to say console.log uh, log console.log passing the user information right here so once we have that i'm just going to go ahead and uh, run the code so it returns to us now okay it doesn't return anything to us uh await prisma to find unique where uh the email is going to be equals to john doe so john doe john doe at gmail.com so gmail.com so let's uh see this and let's see what we get back so you can see it has selected john doe it's done to us john doe the email is gmail.com uh the, the age is 25 and all that information right there so that's basically how we can use the find unique so you can find unique based on unique this is a unique name so uh, the unique name is going to be let's say john doe because the unique the name field is also unique right so i'm going to pass in the name right here and it's going to return to us just the unique uh, john doe information right here so great you can also select uh, helen doe i think i have helen doe uh, let's see if we have helen doe yeah, I don't have any. Let's actually look at my Prisma database and let's see what I have. So if I go to users, I have a user named uh, Helen Thomas. Okay, Helen Thomas. So I can go here and just find Helen Thomas. Say Helen uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas, right here. And then simply uh, check my terminal. Okay, now you can see we have Helen Thomas information right there. So yeah, that's basically how you can select different values from uh, using the unique. Okay uh let me now let's go and see how we can also do one thing we can also do we can also select the find first and find first is going to return to the first uh information that matches the given query that we specify so uh if the, the information matches the given query specify it's going to go ahead and return for example if you look at the ages we have 25 25 25 so if i select the age where the age is 25 it's going to return to me only the first one the first one that is going to match the query that we specified so i'm just going to go ahead and uh, say find uh find first you first uh, user so when you say const user is going to be equals to await prisma dot uh prisma dot user dot find one find uh one just like that F oh sorry find first <laughs> find first and it's going to go ahead and simply pa pa pass in the phone so we're going to say where and then where you're going to go ahead and say where the the, the age is going to be 25 right so it's going to return to us where the age is going to be 25 you can specify the select uh you say you want to select the the id is going to be true i want the name i want the age uh, i want the age of that user so it is also going to be true just basically like that so i'm just going to go ahead and simply run this and then simply print out the console dot log uh log the user information right there so once i have this done just going to go ahead and run the code again so uh once the way for the code to run so you can see we have uh john john doe even though there are many guys who have 25 years old right they're 25 but you only get the first one that matches that query and the first one happened to be john okay yeah so that's uh fine what fine one does find for sorry what first uh find first does it just returns you the first uh, query that matches the information you provided okay so uh yeah that's basically it uh how we can select the uh, information right there so uh one thing you can also do is um uh, you can also perform this on the profile information if you want so let's go ahead and provide this on the on the profile so we can say profile dot find first where location uh location i'm going to say where uh location is going to be uh, location is going to be nairobi so nairobi uh yeah that's basically it so we want the location to be nairobi uh nairobi and i also want the the location name so location uh where the, we're going to select where the location is going to be nairobi and if you look into our prisma uh prisma the prisma file if you look at the profile nationality uh nationalities we have uh users we have many people who come from nairobi i think we have a lot yeah, yeah we have a lot so if i go into kenya we have um Helen and Thomas, they're both from Nairobi. So let's uh, run the query and let's see what we get back. So if you run the query, now you can see we have here, we have this information and uh, from the person is from Nairobi, which is this user ID ending in 52F, right? So yeah, that's basically it, what, uh, what we can do right here. So let's say use my uh, find many. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. And you can also apply find, uh, uh, okay, also apply uh, find, uh, let's try to apply it, find many on the find menu on the profile picture on the sorry on the profile table so find uh 
find many so right there find many and you're going to go ahead and say the location is going to be nairobi you're going to select this information um uh find many you're going to select the, where is nairobi uh the location is going to be uh, uh location is nairobi sorry and then you're going to pass in the order by so you can also pass in the order by and you can order by something right so if you let me just run this query without all the order by uh the, the order by constraints so if i run this right now uh, let's see what we get so we get back to people from nairobi right this information right here we get back to people from nairobi so uh let's try to get back uh let's try to order by uh let's order by the the the, the, the join date okay so we can say join join date of the of the person so we say join date i'm going to say we're going to order in ascending order so ascending order or descending order so let me see if you can also get the location and uh join date okay so say join date and just say join date is true right here so join date is going to be so true right here so we also want to see the join date with the person join they're going to be ordering by the join date so if i go back here and let's see what we get so we get back the information of the person the id the location and then the join date so we can see these are the join date information right here okay yeah that's any it is ordered in ascending order so what if you want to order this in descending order i can just say descending order and it's going to go ahead and order that information in descending order this is the descending order so ascending order is this way and then descending order is this way. so you can see the information right here has changed right so this one became the first and this one became the last one which was previously the first one so yeah that's great so uh just you can do order by uh you can use order by to query different stuff you also look at already how to skip and take already so uh good so if you can go uh, down here you can just go ahead and say uh skip so you're going to go ahead and say you want to skip one so you're going to skip the first one and it's going to turn to us only the last one right so we have only one yeah so great that's how you can use skip for uh, for for that so uh yeah that's uh, how you can use uh, uh basics of uh, filtering you can you have learned how to use uh where where closes you have learned how to use select uh you have learned how to use uh, fill to select you have learned how to order by how to skip how to take in all of that information so now uh let's learn a bit more uh, advanced let's see what's uh, what's more what's on the list most we have learned all this information so i'm going to learn how to use greater than less than uh this you look at distinct skip take order by where we're going to look at greater than less than greater than or equal we're going to look at that just in a second we also have more advanced queries such as equal not not in contains not and we're going to look at all this just in a second so let's go back to our vs code and let's see what's next so let's go ahead and do more uh filtering so i'm just going to go ahead and delete this part let me just uh delete this inside of here so delete this so uh once i have this deleted uh let's see just delete this as well so delete this okay so once i have this deleted i'm going to go out into the user table i want to say prisma dot find uh, user dot find uh, many and i can go ahead and specify the where close right here so i'm going to specify the where close so i'm going to say where and then this we're going to learn how to use uh uh, name so we're going to say filter where name and you're going to say name uh let's say you want to use the contain so we're going to say contains and let's say the name contains uh do so it's going to turn to us all the people whose name contains do so if i go and see this you can see we have janet do and john do because their name contains do right so uh let's say whose name contains uh contains uh let's say uh j inside of it so let's say j so contains j, later j instead of it and we get back uh the yeah, j john doe and then also we have janet to their name both contains j right so you can also say contains this is how you can use contains you can also use that with so i'm going to copy this comment this out and then paste this and you can say start with so start uh start with so we're going to find all the people whose name start with j and it's going to be uh Janice Doe and John Doe because their names start with uh, Doe. Let's say their names end with uh, start with a H, and that's going to be Helen, right? Helen Thomas, if I'm not mistaken, and that should return to me Helen Thomas because his name uh, starts with a H. Okay, so let's say the name con uh, the name ends with an E, so ends with and an E. So let's say ends with and it's going to return to us all the names that end with an E, and that's going to be Doe do and d right their names end with an e and that's basically it so you can also do, do use this this for email so if you uh, change this to be email and then you can say email contains contains uh say 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 gmail so let's find all the emails that are gmail emails and it's going to return to us uh the following record right so i also have one email which is i gave it test so it's a test and let's find all the uh names that are test uh so you can see you have only test at gmail.com contains test right for helen uh for thomas d Okay, so that's basically it how you can use um, contains. Okay, 
and let's say let's say or well, how we can use the equals so you can say name so name and the name is going to be this object right here and we're going to say uh equal equals and the name the, the name equals to what and you can pass in what it equals so let's say the name which is equals to uh john do just like it, it's very similar to using like equal equal operator in like uh, comparison operator in python so you can see you get done we get back john do so that's basically how you can use the equals and then you can say you can say also say age so age equals and then age equals to 25 so if i say 25 right here it's going to return to me all the users whose name equal ages equals to 25 so 25 25 25 right good so uh good so now uh, we have looked at that and you can say um uh, let's also say change this back to name so i'm going to change this back to name so name not so you can also use the not uh, not is going to return to us all the names which are not uh, uh john D john doe which is basically all the other guys right so all the other three guys from our database and you can also say uh in so you can say in and then in you can be used in you have to provide in an a list so it's going to return to you all the names that are going to be in this list so uh have helen uh, let me just say helen thomas or thomas uh thomas d just like that so it's going to return to me john doe and thomas d because they're inside of our list so you can see john doe and thomas d just like that so that's how you can use the in operator and you can also see not in operator so you can say uh not in operator and it's going to return to us the names that are not inside of that thing so you can see uh it's going to return to us helen thomas and janice doe because they are not inside they're not they're neither john doe or thomas doe that's basically it yeah so as that's, that's you can use equals the not the in and then the not in okay so that's basically it and now let's look at how we can use the end uh end so end is a bit uh for advanced uh, filtering so we can say end so, so just uh this is going to be a list so we're going to return to uh you're going to it's going to return to us anything that much that is uh within the so let me just uh, it's going to return to us any, anything that's going to specify in here so we can say name uh name uh name is going to be say we can say uh contains so con contains uh name contains john uh, name contains uh john basically and then i'm going to copy this right here and then i uh, paste it down here and then the name name contains john and then i'm going to say the email uh the email right here and the email is just going to say contains uh gmail so this is going to say the name contains john and the email contains gmail so it's going to say it's going to use all these uh, individual elements of the list as end so it's going to say name is uh, john and email is email contains gmail so if you run this now you're going to go so only going to go ahead and get john doe because his name contains john and his email contains gmail right so gmail in the text of the email so that's basically how you can use an end operator you can also go ahead and use a not operator so you can just change this to be not uh not so they say not all uppercase so once we have that done so if you run this again it's going to return to us all the users who are not uh who are not basically um who don't have a uh, who don't have a uh, gmail in the email and whose name don't start with don't start don't contains john and that's the only person which is uh helen thomas whose email ends with test and his name does not contain john because it's thomas d right so yeah so that's basically it how you can use the uh, uh, end operators and all that stuff so let me just comment this out for now uh comment this out and uh and comment uh let's delete this part right here so just bring this back and uh, undo that and then comment out this whole part okay in case you guys want to refer to it uh, okay so we also have the uh, the age you can say the age so you can say the age when it's like the age is greater than uh greater than um let's say age greater than 20 right so it's going to return to us all the people whose age are greater than 20 which is going to be three individual people uh one two three because the age is 25 so if i say age is greater than 20 26 or 27 then you're not going to go ahead and get you're going to get an empty list because no one is greater than 27 right so um let's say that age is greater than uh, age is less than let's say age is uh less than less than 27 and that's going to return to us all the people from our database because everyone in there is less than 27 because we have one guy with is zero so let's actually change this zero to be uh, let's say 40 so i'm just going to go back into our database and let's go into users and let's go into here change this to be a uh, 67 and then press enter and then save that record so now let's go back in here and uh, change say greater than anyone who is less than uh anyone who is less than 20 let's see what we get back so less than 20 
we should get back an empty list right because no one is less than 20 so if you say greater than greater than uh, 50 you're going to get only one person who is above 50 right which is uh, uh random so 65 so it's going to rather one person with 65 right here so great so, so you can use greater than less than you can also greater than or equals to uh so should, greater than or equals to you should get back only one person right if you say equals to 60 60 uh change this to be 67 so change this to be 67 and then simply run that again so that should return to us the person who is uh 67 which is this one right here okay great so uh once we have that done uh we can go ahead and uh, do the couple of things more so we can also do relationship queries and other stuff so that's how we can do, do advanced querying querying in uh using uh prisma we can do advanced querying using prisma so let's go back in here and uh let's go back in here and let's see so we have learned all this right contains not in equals and all that so let's look at uh, relationship querying in postgres uh, sorry in uh, uh, prisma so prisma you can do relationship query which is basically querying the relationships of a given uh, table or model right so we can do um relationship query you can do it in a couple of ways so let's see how we can do relationship querying so i'm going to go back inside of my vs code and in here i'm just going to go ahead and do the following so uh what i want to go ahead and do is i want to say uh user equals to await prisma dot user dot find many and i can do a filtering i can say where uh where i can use the where where and i can specify the profile right because the, the profile is a relationship remember so the profile so if we go back into our schema and look at the user table we have the the profile and the profile is of the profile which is just another table which is just the relationship which is a one-to-one -one relationship right so I can filter that relationship and look for location. Location uh, is Nairobi, so Nairobi. So I'm going to look for locations in the in the in the profile where the user's information is Nairobi, and I can specify what I want to select out of that. So I can say uh, select, and then select, and I can pass in the different information I want to select. So I say ID is going to be true. The uh, the profile is going to be true as well. So true, just like that. So yeah once i have that i can just go ahead and see what we get back so you can i uh, selected that information where the location is in nairobi we have two people from nairobi right the first one and the second person so you, you get that the profile information we have the id and all that information right so as you can do relationship querying okay another way you can do this can also, uh, query the post information so i can just change this to be uh post information so sorry it's a post and the posts, uh, this are actually going to be posts, and you can go ahead and specify the following. So for posts, I can go ahead and specify uh, none. We have none every and all of that. So you can say none, uh, none, and then say none, and we pass in the values of none here. So none where the title is, uh, the title is going to be the following. So the title uh, con contains, uh, we have a title with first just like this first and let's see what we get back so if i go back in here let's see what we get so that's how we can do relationship querying uh in uh in uh in uh prisma so again so let's see if you can get the post so let's say post just like that and post is going to be true let's see if i can get the post information uh okay so we can have the post information this person still has no post uh has zero post okay post uh, that should be zero so yeah that's how we can do that none and you can also do I think it's every so we can do every uh where the title contains this we're going to get that information back so we can see we have the every and i think there's one to say some yeah some where the title contains first uh just go back in here and let's see so we can see we have for far where the some contains first we have all these posts we're containing first inside of the email of, of the sorry of the of the of the of the username right basically so yeah that's how we can do uh first in here so uh, that's how we can do first to create uh, our relationship database. You can also do the uh, the outer. So let me just go here and say delete. Or uh, you can say the outer. So this is going to be the post. I want to filter the post table. So it'll be posts uh, post dot uh, where the outer and the outer. We can say uh, the outer is. You can also use is here, and you can say the following. So the outer is. You say age uh, where the outer's age is uh, greater than let's say. 24 so they're going to select where the outer's age is greater than 24 just like this so we can pass in the this is going to be the post so we can get in the post the title uh the post title is going to be true the post content is going to be sorry uh content is going to be also be true just like that so we have the post title and the post content basically where the outer is age is greater than 25 so if you check this it's going to return to us all the others having 25 in their age if you say uh 
less than uh, less than 20 less than 20 less than 24 we should get back zero right nothing okay yeah so let's say greater than or equal so greater than or equal okay is equal equals and equals 24 we don't have anything equals to let's say 60 67 you should get back only one user because only one user is 67 years uh, old so we can get back that post of that user with 67 years old okay so yeah that's how we can do um we can do advanced filtering in uh in prisma so you can do a lot of stuff with this uh you can say is uh, you can say is not so we're going to, going to go return all the all the uh, uh all the uh all the posts where the outer is not this that does not match this value so all the guys who are 25 years old should be uh their post connect should be returned okay so yeah that's basically it you can also do is uh you say is and also say is not and yeah that's basically it so that's basically how we can do uh, uh the relationship filtering in uh, prisma so i hope that this covers all the bases that you need to know unless you're doing something really like specific uh, or niche stuff that's when you use to use more advanced queries but for now uh this all that you have learned should now give you the basic foundation right so uh yeah there are many other stuff out there that uh, uh they're kind of uh, there's this few stuff that i didn't really go over so yeah, this should help you with your getting started with prisma so uh now let's look at uh, update query so we can do updates you can do update in many ways you can do update using the uh, update menu and update just update so yeah so let's look at update menu and see how it works so i'm um, just going to go in here i'm going to say uh this just delete all of this so i'm going to delete all of this and i'm going to say user uh, prisma dot user dot uh update so then be update uh many so i'm going to say update many so update mini is going to update all the users that match to up to this query. So for update, you need to provide in two fields. The first thing you need to provide in is the where where field because you want to like just like in SQL when you're updating something, we use the where clause. And I have a video on SQL how to use SQL uh, using my SQL. So if you want to learn SQL, I also have a video. So in, when you're doing SQL or to update something, you have to specify where the certain value is true. Right. So we're going to do the same thing here. So when you say where uh, the name, where the user name, right? So where the user name uh the username uh contains the following so the username uh the username contains so contains contains the username contains the following so we're going to say the username contains thomas right here so we're going to also pass in the data so we say data uh data and it's going to be this right here so yeah so the data is going to be the following so the data let me just uh indent this so and then this okay so the data we pass in the phone so where the, the the username matches thomas we can pass in uh which field to uh, how we what we want to update or which fields we want to update so we want to update the, the, the name the name field is going to be thomas thomas updated or edited thomas updated and then the, the age i'm going to go ahead and say the age the age is going to be uh, we're going to increment the age increment by uh, increment the age by uh three okay so that's basically done so let's go back in here okay so the constraint field because uh because this is running the background so it probably updated whenever i uh, i save this so i'm just uh thomas contains thomas uh contains thomas and you're going to go ahead and co contains thomas and let me just say contains uh, let me just stop this for now because this is running the background and running the query before i finish typing us so let me say contains update you're going to uh, you're going to update this to, to thomas edited uh edited update just like that and once we have the, uh, okay, so we're going to uh, change where the name contains update you're going to change it to thomas up edited update and i'm going to increment the age by one so that's basically it so if i go back in here play the terminal and then run the query again uh that should be done so now that's done and you have been updated so now if you go back into our prisma so if you go into our prisma studio and then simply refresh the user table so you can see now thomas uh okay it's not picking up the update but it has been updated you can uh, trust me on that so sometimes it just uh, doesn't pick up the updates okay uh yeah sometimes it doesn't pick up the update but trust me because it has been uh, updated so uh, you can select all the users and see what information you get back so that's what how, how you can use to update information so you can trust me on this it has been uh, updated so this actually returns to your account and not user so i'm say count uh count and you can just simply log uh, the account just just like that so uh let me just say you can select all that user information if you guys want to confirm so it's a const uh users equals to await uh prisma dot users dot user dot find many just like that and then you can simply do console dot log and then login that user 
so great once we have the login users okay once we have that you see uh, we run this code again uh should then to us all the users now we should see one being updated so the thomas the thomas thomas doesn't been updated yet for some reason so the thomas hasn't been updated so let's find out why it failed to update so uh let me just uncomment this out so comment this out uh let's run this query again and let's see so thomas 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 has not been uh updated so just uh stop the development server for now and let's look at our query one more time where the name uh we're going to update the user update many where the name uh name name is thomas so let's because update doesn't exist we're going to say thomas you're going to change that to be thomas edited so let's run that again uh let's give it some time so we got an area constraint field on the name field so uh okay we're not getting that information box let me just stop the prism uh, sorry non mode so uh thomas let me look uh, closely at the data so thomas uh okay so let's change where the name contains the uh, thomas uh thomas d okay uh Okay, let's, I think we should just change it to Thomas D and let's see what, what happens there. Okay, so I'm going to go back in here and then say, let's say where the name contains uh, D. Uh, let's see what we have or happen whenever we run the code. So let's wait for it to run. And once it's run, uh, we don't get, okay, here it has been changed. So now Thomas uh, uh, Thomas edited update. So if you go back in here, and even if you refresh it in here, you can see it has been updated. So I, I think for some reason it feels it was failing to update it. I don't know why. I didn't, maybe I made a mistake somewhere. But yeah, for now you can see how you can update information there. So great. So you can use uh, how you can use update many. You can update different fields. And now the age of Thomas D should have been incremented by one because it was 20, 25. So it has been updated more than one time. So it's a bit actually three times because it was 25. So it has been updated three times. I don't know why the name wasn't changing. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, how you can update that information from the from the user so yeah that's how you can uh, uh update the user information and stuff like that so now let's look at uh, how we can use to go back to in here and see how we can use uh update uh query so one well, if you uh, i think if you're using update you have to specify the unique value right where value is unique so let's try to see because i skipped the update part so let's try to see how we can use the updates right here so let me just stop this because i don't want it to run before i finish typing so i'm just going to go in here and then the following so i'm going to say where email uh, i'm going to change this to be where email uh email is going to be uh let's say uh, email i'm going to use john doe's in john doe email john doe at gmail.com so at gmail.com and then uh for the for the data i'm just going to go ahead and uh uh let me just say change email i'm going to change email to be john let me just change the email so i'm not going to increment the age i'm going to simply say email so email and i'm going to change the email to be uh john john doe uh edited at uh at gmail.com so i'm going to change it uh to edit it, john doe edited at gmail.com where the user email is this one so then we're just going to be using updates and and for updates you have to use a unique field for the where clause where so you're going to say where uh we're going to say update but you're going to use with where is going to be a unique field and email is unique and you can check back in our schema the email of the user is unique right so we're going to use a unique field right there so once we have that i'm just going to clear the terminal and then run this one more time so yeah so if i check to uh, thomas do thomas do now you can say thomas do uh, edited email and that's that i can edit a different user email so that's how you can use uh, update for that so i'm just going to go ahead and stop the server and uh, yeah so that's basically how you can use uh up, update many and update so update uh it does not take in a unique field or can take a unique field but uh, update must be we have to specify a unique field for it so yeah that's basically it so let's look at delete and delete has the same things as update so delete uh, we can use delete many where we can specify uh we can specify not just a unique field but also non-unique field like just like update but for delete you have to specify a unique field just like the uh the one for the update that we covered so let's see how we can delete data uh, from here so i can just go here and say delete uh, let me just uh, delete some nationality and they, you can delete a user because the user has a lot of data attached to it so if you want to delete the user you have to delete all the dependents like all its uh, relationships first before you can delete the user uh, because the, 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 the relationship might exist right there's no non-value you didn't specify any non-values okay 
so what i want to go ahead and delete is try to delete a nationality so i'm going to go ahead and try say uh, prisma and let's say nationality dot dot uh, this is going to be delete okay delete uh delete many and i can say where the nationality is going to be let's say uh uh kenya so let's say kenya just like that you're going to delete the nationality where it's kenya so i'm going to uh remove this uh and then say name name of the nationality is kenya so that's basically it so when you run this query it's going to go ahead and delete it where, where kenya so where, where the nationality is kenya so i'm just going to go ahead clear the terminal and then run this one more time so it's going to delete the nationality where is kenya so it's going to delete and you can see deleted one count is one right here so it deleted one instance of data so if i go back in here uh into my prisma and then go into nationality i should now see only india and the us because uh kenya has been deleted right so that's how you can use delete many you can also use the delete uh, delete field with takes in a unique attributes right so delete takes in a unique attribute and if you want to delete all the nationalities you can just go ahead and say delete many and then no specify any field any uh uh any uh, uh any condi where condition right here you're going to go ahead and delete all of them so if you run this code it's going to go ahead and delete all the nationalities so if i run the code again so it's going to delete also the us and india so if you check back here you can see now the us and india has been deleted as well so great so that's how you can use uh delete and delete stuff like that so yeah that's basically it for this video and this video teaches you all the basis of prisma that you need to know so if you have any future recommendations for future videos i'm also going to make a video uh, about this so actually i'm going to make a video about how to use prisma with nextjs to create a simple contact list using prisma's database you're going to sort a different user contacts and if i know you have next yes you're going to be the front end application to query and display that data to the user and that's the video i'm going to be making uh maybe it come out next week from watching this video i don't know uh but uh, yeah i'm going to make a video about it if you guys have any recommendations let me know in the comment section below and i'll get back to you and if you have any suggestions of future for future videos let me know i'll do my best to get back to you guys so i use slide go for these slides uh so thanks for watching and uh please don't forget to like to share and to subscribe to the youtube channel and um, drop a comment in the comment section below let me know uh, of, of any feedback that you have so thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one keep safe